computer science at Obakids Link TV. Hi friends, welcome to another episode of Basic Computer Science at Obakids Link TV. My name is Bibi. On today's episode, we are going to discuss another interesting and amazing topic, which is parts of a computer system. Follow me as I proceed on the topic outline. Topic outline 1. Introduction to the parts of a computer system 2. Essential functional parts of a computer system The keyboard, the mouse, the CPU, the motherboard and the monitor 3. Other important but not essential parts of a computer system. The printer, the scanner, the speaker, the microphone, the headset, the webcam, and the UPS. 4. Brief explanation on each of the parts. Introduction to the parts of a computer system. A computer system generally consists of several different parts and each has its own specific set of functions to perform. A desktop computer, for example, can be broken down into major parts, all of which are essential to any functional desktop computer. These essential parts are the following. 1. The keyboard. 2. The mouse 3. The CPU 4. The motherboard and 5. The monitor Other important but not essential functional parts of your computer are 1. The printer 2. The scanner 3. The speaker Four, the microphone. Five, the headset. Six, the webcam. And seven, the UPS. Friends, let's give brief explanations on each of the parts of a computer system. One, the keyboard. The first one out of the parts of a computer system is the keyboard. The keyboard is an input device used to type data and characters into the computer by pressing its buttons or keys. It is the primary device used to enter text into the computer. A keyboard typically contains keys for individual letters, numbers and special characters as well as keys for specific functions. The keyboard is an important part of any desktop computer. It lets you communicate with your personal computer. Pattern diagram of a keyboard. There are five major parts of a keyboard. They are the following. One, the functional keys. The functional keys are located at the top buttons of the keyboard. They consist of F1 to F12 and so on. To the number of numerical keys. They are the part of the keyboard which comprises of numbers only. 3. The alphanumerical keys. It is the part of the keyboard which consists of both alphabets and numbers together. For the cursor movement keys, they are the up, down, left, right navigation arrow keys on the lower part of the keyboard. There are the four cardinal arrows used in moving the pointer around the screen. Five, the control keys. They are the insert, home, page of keys, and they are opposite on the upper right corner of the keyboard. However, the keyboard can be used to perform the following tasks. 
Typing of documents, accessing menus on the computer, playing different types of games, and performing a variety of other tasks. To the mouse. The second part of a computer system is the mouse. A mouse is a computer device that is used in controlling the movement of the pointer or cursor on the screen. As you move the mouse, the pointer on the display screen moves in the same direction with the movement of the mouse. A mouse lets you control your computer's performance and tell your computer what to do. The following are the major uses of the mouse. 1. It is used to copy and select text. 2. It is used to drag data and files and dropping it elsewhere. 3. It is used for graphics drawing and copying. 4. It is used to point to an object on the screen. 5. It is also used for scrolling applications on Windows or a web page on the computer. 3. The Central Processing Unit CPU The third part of the computer is the CPU. CPU is an abbreviation which means Central Processing Unit. It is the part of a computer that is responsible for processing the data fed into the computer through the keyboard or other input devices. It is commonly referred to as the brain of a computer. The CPU is also known as the processor or microprocessor. It is an important part of a computer because it sends signals to other parts of the computer and controls them, just as how a brain controls the entire body. Functions of a CPU 1. It is referring to as a computer brain, therefore carries out all the important functions of a computer. 2. It receives instructions from the hardware and software and produces output from them. 3. It stores all the important programs, like operating systems and application software. 4. It types in storing data and other instructions given to a computer. 5. CPU also helps input and output devices to communicate with each other. 6. It is the controller of all the other parts of a computer. The CPU consists of the following parts. A. The memory unit. B. The control unit. And C. Arithmetic and logical unit. ALU. Kate, let us go through a brief explanation on each of the parts of the CPUs. A. Memory or storage unit. The memory or storage is also known as internal storage unit or main memory of a computer. It is responsible for storing data and instructions and results. It also gives information to other parts of the computer when needed. Its functions are to store the results of the processed data in the computer and to store all the data and instructions given to a computer for processing. B. Control Unit According to its name, the control unit controls the operations of all parts of the computer. Its functions are the following. It controls the transfer of data and instructions among other units of a computer. It controls all the units of the computer but cannot store data or process it. It works with devices like output and input so as to transfer data or requests from the storage. It is responsible for collection of instructions from the memory and interprets them. C. ALU Arithmetic Logic Unit ALU is responsible for performing arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and also to perform logic operations such as comparing, selecting, matching, and merging of data. For the motherboard, the motherboard is the first part of a computer system. Motherboard serves as a single platform to connect all other parts of a computer together. 
it can be considered as the backbone of a computer because it connects the CPU, memory, hard drives, optical drives, video cards, sound cards and other parts and expansion cards directly or through cables. Its functions are as follows. 1. Motherboard varies greatly in supporting various types of components. 2. Motherboard supports a single type of CPU and few types of memories. Video cards, hard disks, sound cards have to be compatible with the motherboard to function properly. 3. Motherboards, cases and power supplies must be compatible to work properly together. 5. The monitor. Monitor is the fifth part of a desktop computer system. Monitor is an output device which displays pictures and images and texts fed into the computer. It allows everyone to interact directly with the computer and running their programs as they wish. Monitors often look similar to televisions as every activity is doing on the computer are always shown on it with clear pictures. However, its resolution is much higher than a TV. The first computer monitor was introduced in March 1973. Your computer's monitor lets you see what you're doing. Even if you have everything needed to start your computer, you can't do anything without the monitor. When you connect a monitor to your computer system unit, it enables you to view your computer's desktop and see what you're working on. The following are the types of a computer monitor. 1. CRT stands for Cathode Ray 2. A traditional clear screen television cell like monitor. They were built using a fluorescent screen and cathode ray tube CRT, which made them heavy and large in size, thus causing them to cover more space on the desk. 2. LCD stands for liquid crystal display. The newer, flatter type of computer screen. They were made up using Flat panel display technology and take less space on the desk as compared to older ones. Friends, there are other parts of the computer system that are also important but are not essential to the computer's basic functions. These other parts are the following. 1. The printers. A printer is an output device that prints paper documents. This includes text documents, images, or a combination of both. The two most common types of printers are inkjet and laser printers. To the scanners. A scanner is an input device that scans documents such as photographs and pages of text. It allows you to create and send physical documents to and from your computer. It is used to create an electronic version of the document which can be viewed or edited on a computer. 3. The speakers. The speaker lets you hear sounds produced by your computer. The purpose of speakers is to produce sound or audio output that can be heard by the listeners. 4. The microphones. Another device is a microphone. It is used to capture audio by converting sound waves into an electrical signal. The signal can be processed by a computer or other digital audio devices. 5. The headset. The headset allows the user to talk and listen while keeping their hands free while doing other jobs. 6. The webcams. A webcam is a digital video device usually attached or built into a computer. It is mainly used to transmit pictures over the internet. It is commonly used with immediate messaging services for recording images. 7. The UPS An uninterruptible power supply or uninterruptible power source, UPS is an electric device.
device that provides emergency power to a computer and the main power phase or cutoff. It is typically used to protect hardware such as computers and other like data centers, telecommunication equipment or other electrical equipment from data loss or damages whenever there is a shortage of power. Kids, hope you have enjoyed our topic for today on basic computer science and over green TV. If you really enjoyed our topic, then subscribe to our channel Obakitling TV, YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram.